Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Return from Beagle Point. We are just 213 jumps away from completing our journey across the galaxy. Uh, currently located right... Oops, if I can zoom out a little bit. Currently located right here. We just need to get right over here. And, uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing right now. Let's get off the ground, get on our way start jumping, finding some more uh, biological signatures and all that kind of cool stuff. Before we get too far into the video, I would like to encourage you to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, help us reach that next milestone of 10,000 subscribers. Uh, it can only happen if you guys actually press those buttons, so be sure to do that before clicking off. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, the purpose of this journey is to increase our exobiology rank and hopefully make enough money to purchase a fleet carrier once we get back to the bubble. We have about 6 billion credits right now, most of which, well pretty much all of which is from this trip. Uh, it's taken us a few months, it's taken us oh, several months to get this done because I've been kind of just taking it a half hour at a time. So that's kind of what's been going on here. For those of you who are new, don't really know what's going on with the series. That's what you're jumping into. Uh, once we get back to the bubble, I'll start doing some, some kind of different stuff for a little bit. Do some uh, first-person stuff, maybe do, some, uh, maybe do a couple of trading episodes, do some mining, things like that. Uh, but for now, we still have to get back to the bubble, and that's kind of priority number one. Uh, I'm looking for high-metal content planets, preferably with two biological signatures on it. Because that's going to give us that awesome uh, Stratum Tectonicus. And with First Footfall, that gives you 90 million credits. Sorry for those of you who have to listen to me say that every episode. But the vast majority of people who watch my content are new people and they have no idea what's going on. So I have to assume that when I'm saying things. Alright, doesn't look like there's any more uh, high content, high metal content planets left. So let's hop into that there and hop onto the next system. <clears throat> the great thing about doing things the way that we do them is is that it's kind of a win either way. If we don't find anything, then we make some distance. And if we do find something, well, we make some money. So either way, we're either making distance or we're making money. It's kind of a nice way to uh, have a mental approach to what we're doing here. Because um, it can be kind of disheartening when you're trying to get something, when you're trying to, when you're trying to get something done and it's just not happening for you. So if you can put yourself in a situation where it's a win either way, that's... That's the best way to go about things. Uh, if we were if we were much further back on our monetary goals, it would be kind of frustrating because you know we would we would need to find biology to find some money. But at this point, I think we're pretty close to our goal. And even if we don't quite make it, we should still have plenty to get us to purchasing the fleet carrier, getting it fully fitted out, <coughs> and then having. Uh, you know, fully fitted out with what I want to have on it. I'm not trying to have all of the modules. I'm going to have an exploration module and maybe a couple other things just to, you know, have some have some resources and abilities and things like that. But for the most part, I just want the exploration uh, the exploration shop on my fleet carrier so that while we're out in the black, we're able to scan things, come back to the fleet carrier, sell off our data. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Really looking forward to being done with this trip, though, because uh, we've been out here for a very, very long time. A very long time. <laughs> That's a bit... Yeah. Just icy bodies, moving right along. Nothing to see here. It's getting kind of warm in here for some reason. Hopefully the air conditioner will kick on here shortly. Don't really have too much to talk about today. Mostly, we're just we're just kind of hoping that we're going to find what we're looking for. It's kind of early in the morning compared to when I normally do my recordings. I normally do my recordings in the early afternoon, but uh, the schedule this week is just really weird, and I'm kind of just I'm kind of just putting things in where I can get them done. Mostly because I know if I wait, if I try to wait till later, I'll I'm, I'm going to get lazy about it, and I'm not going to want to do it. So <laughs> I got to I got to do it when I'm when I'm when I'm feeling you know sort of motivated to get to sit down and actually get it done. Uh, you know, at some point, if the channel grows big enough and I'm actually you know making a living out of this, I'll be a little bit more excited to do it. But for now, it's I'm still in the investment phase, and that can be kind of difficult to motivate yourself to do. It's much easier to motivate yourself to do things when there's a tangible reward. 
So for example, uh, like streamers, a lot of streamers will stream more and more. Um, like they'll do more hours because they know that streaming more will make them more money. Well, if you're not in that phase of where you're actually making money with your stream and your stream consistently makes more money by doing that, it can be really disheartening and unmotivating to, you know, have it. It can be really hard to motivate yourself to do that because there's no actual reward for what you're getting. And, uh, you know, the standard response to something like that is, well, you're investing in your future. You're like you're, you're, you're putting in the time now so that you can have something later. But that doesn't take into account the fact that uh, the vast, 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 vast majority of people who try to do something like streaming or YouTube, they don't make it. <laughs> so it's an investment that they make that never, ever pays off. So it's just it's a it's a massive gamble. If you can make it, it, it you know, it can be something really cool. Uh, but you know, something like three quarters of all businesses fail in the fi in the first five years. Like, and that's just like regular normal businesses for products that people that you know people need that people actually want. Um, and for something like this, where it has an extremely low barrier to entry. And, you know, pretty much anybody can get on a camera and try to do something on YouTube. The odds of you making it, you, the odds of you specifically being one of the people who actually make it are very small. So uh, I, I say all of that to say that, you know, I always try to be real with you guys on, these ch on this channel. Um, I don't do false positivity. But I also try not to be super negative either. I try to be somewhere in the middle. I try, I try as best I can to be like realistic about the things that I say and the, the, the opinions that I have and things like that. And uh, mostly I just ramble about things so you, you, you get a, a smattering of different things that I talk about. Whatever pops into my head, basically. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to get to is, is that uh, because I recognize the fact that the odds of you know, actually making it on YouTube are so astronomically small, it's difficult to motivate myself to do more or to do things, to do to do different things and to try different things. And it's like, yeah, you know, why why am I going to put more effort into something that has an astronomically small chance of actually becoming feasible? Now, my as I've said in the past, my. Uh, <laughs> My, my outlook is a little bit better because I actually got to the point where my channel is monetized, which is actually a very small percentage of YouTube channels. But still, um, even, in, even in the stage that I'm in right now, I don't know. <clears throat> a lot of, uh, I know the thing is, is that a lot of people don't like it when you talk about this stuff, but I'm like, I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. So for those of you who it bothers, when I, when I talk, bothers you when I talk about money or whatever like that, you're just being unrealistic. Everybody who gets on YouTube wants to make money. <laughs> and I just talk about what I I just talk about whatever pops in my head. Mm, just trying to fill the time. Mostly because sitting here jumping and scanning and jumping and scanning it's really boring. So um my previous episode, for most of the series, I tried to have like a topic to talk about, but I've gotten to the point now where it's like <sighs> trying to come up with some kind of philosophical thing to talk about. Every episode is is getting harder and harder to not repeat myself and just talk about the same things over and over and over again. So you know, yeah, mostly I'm just trying to get. I'm mostly I'm just trying to get to where we get back to the bubble, and then hopefully we can have some different things to do, and it won't be the same thing over and over again. Uh, we're, almost, we're almost to sub 200. Almost to sub 200. That'll be pretty sweet when we get below 200. That ma that starts to make it feel like you're really, really close once you get under the 200 jump mark. Because even some of the even some of the near bubble destinations are like within, you know, 100, 150 jumps depending on where you're going. It'd be really nice if we could find some really cool biology though. Because then at least I'll have something to talk about. We got some asteroids and icy bodies, not really particularly interesting. So continue moving on. <coughs> Let's 
Scan, scan, jump and scan. This is also why I don't try to do streaming because trying to, I'm, I'm struggling to try to fill 20 minutes of a flight. But again, a lot of it is just the fact that I'm, I'm still, I don't know. I've been up for three hours at this point, but I'm still kind of. It's early in the day, and I'm not a morning person, so trying <laughs> trying to do this in the morning is not not the best idea, probably. Well, definitely, it's definitely not the best idea. Uh, I'm not. The sun is still not really fully out yet because we have some overcast and stuff. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a sun-powered person. Um, when there's when there's light and all of that stuff, I'm I'm much more awake and energetic. And you start getting into the nighttime. Like I'm at the point now where driving at night is a lot more difficult because I just I don't have the same amount of energy. That uh, I don't have the same amount of energy. When it's dark now, <laughs> I get sleepy more easily at night. The older you get, don't get old. If you're a young person watching this, just do your best to not get old. <laughs> Apparently, though, technology is getting to the well. I keep being told, anyways, that technology will get to the point during our lifetime where we can choose not to die. So maybe that's something we could talk about. Apparently, uh, we're, we're getting to the point where we're starting to understand biology well enough that we can start doing moderate life extension, right? So we're not at the we're not even we're not anywhere close to the point where we can make you immortal. But the theory is that we can extend your life by say 50 years, and then in those 50 years we figure out a way to ma maybe extend life by you know 200 years. And then in that period, we figure out a thousand years. We slowly, incrementally increase our lifespan up until the point where now we just don't die unless we just have an accident of some kind, or we just get tired of living because everything's gotten so boring and we just end it, end it that way. <laughs> um, that sounds great on the surface. That would be really awesome if we could do that, but it only it's only great if you're able to reverse the aging process because uh, I don't know that I want to spend a thousand years even with my body the way it is right now. Uh, I have aches and pains and all kinds of things that are <laughs> that make uh, that make things unpleasant. Uh, so if they unless they're able to come out with a way to you know retroactively fix things that are <laughs> problems with your body. Uh, return you basically back to a state of being like maybe 25 then then I think it's worth it <laughs> you know you're 10,000 years old but you look like you're 25 I, that would be that would be reasonable to do I don't know that I want to do it at 45 50 55 60 <laughs> at that point you're like yeah maybe I'll just let you guys have this one and I'm I'm, I'm gonna move on because I don't I don't want to spend 10,000 years with all these aches and pains but then again, I'm sure as medicine advances, they'll figure out ways to get around all of that and reduce pain and rebuild this. And you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, futurists who uh, talk about the possibility of uh, moving away from a biological form and maybe uploading yourself into a computer or maybe having some kind of a robotic body or something like that. I don't know. I know a lot of young people would probably say that they don't necessarily... They would think it was cool, but then they would also have the uh, lack of certain physical activities. I'm going to tell you now, that gets old after a while. <laughs> uh, the older you get, the less that particular activity has... Uh, the less that particular activity has a hold on you. Like, you still, you're still always going to, you know, have a desire for it, but it's not going to be the all-consuming desire that it is when you're in your 20s. <clears throat> hormones and all of that stuff starts to uh, fade after a while and then it's just the fact that you know you can only do the same activity so many times before it becomes boring you know and you can only experience it's like drugs right like um, that particular act that particular act releases certain chemicals in your body and eventually you start to build up a resistance to that so <laughs> you know you have two pathways. You can either take a break from it for a while to give your body time to reset and then come back to it. And then maybe you have a, a similar ex experience to maybe the, when it was earlier in your life. Or you have to find more and more 
interesting ways of stimulating that experience so that the experience is more i don't know and that's how people go down crazy rabbit holes of doing uh, of doing or you know doing different things that normal people wouldn't necessarily think of because all the normal things get really boring and then you're you're still seeking that you're still seeking that satisfaction from what you're trying to get from what you're trying to get done and then uh, you got to try different things and then you start moving down further and further and that's <laughs> that's kind of the trap of uh, that's kind of the trap of that particular part of the human experience and a lot of people don't a lot of people don't stop and think and uh, stop and think to recognize that um, but the older you get and it's, it's assuming you're paying attention the older you get the more you start paying attention to that kind of stuff the more you realize you know what uh, as nice as that particular thing is I, I just I'm not having an I'm not it's not as fun as it used to be and it's a lot more work than it was when I was you know a much younger man and uh, I'd rather just kind of chill and watch TV <laughs> uh, so the goal the goal is is to find somebody that you can spend your life with so that once they once you get to that point uh, you can share some kind of intimacy with somebody without it having to be you know you're pursuing that particular activity that's the goal. Unfortunately, our society today has made it so that uh, see, that seeking that particular human arrangement is not nearly as popular as it used to be, and uh, it's much harder to find that nowadays than it used to be, and that kind of sucks. Because realistically, you know, people people make people try to make long-term decisions when they're young, but. You haven't really developed into who you're going to be until you're in your late 20s, early 30s. And even then, you know, I'm going to tell you now. My dryer just stopped. Um, I'm going to tell you now for all of you who are really young and you look up to older people and you try to. What's going on here? All right, we're just going to move on. Uh, for the, for all of you younger people who look up to older people and you, you, you think that there's something special there, there's not. We're, we're exactly the same. Once you get to the point where you're old enough to start making your own decisions, you're basically on the same playing field as everybody else. It, like in, in the past, maybe there was a maybe there was a point where you know older people had excuse me older people had more wisdom and knowledge and things like that but with the internet and with the way society has moved into a much 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 more self-centered kind of thing um, most of the older people today don't have the kind of maturity you think they have you know they they look older They've existed longer, but most of them don't. Most of them haven't developed themselves because, you know, there's just a lot of selfishness in the world today, and the older people are just as selfish as the younger people. So it's just kind of the way that it works now. So there's plenty of older people out there that, you know, probably deserve your respect, but there's a lot less of them than there used to be. From a, from a, just from a ratio perspective. The number of, you know, 60-plus-year-old people that I've seen acting like children is staggering. <laughs> <laughs> it's staggering. So, I don't know what else to say about that other than the world is just kind of sucking right now. But anyways, back to my point. Um, try to find something, try to find try to find somebody that you can spend your life with that has aligned goals with you or or at the very least or at the very least is fine with the goals that you have and is ready to go along for that ride. That's 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 the biggest thing you need to find. And then outside of that, you know, the older you get, the less the physical urges are a major a major component of your decision making process. And the more you can start focusing on different other different aspects of your life. Um, if you're in your twenties, that's not going to make much sense to you because if you're in your twenties, you have certain things that are happening with you, right? <laughs> I don't know how this. I don't know how this convert. This is what I'm talking about. Like my rambly conversation. I don't know how I how this turned into a conversation about uh, this particular topic. Can we scan, please? But that's what happens. You let you let yourself go down the winding paths in your mind, and you end up on weird topics. But I think the I think the biggest uh, the biggest takeaway from all of that is that. Um, our society has moved away from 
you know, marriage and the traditional family and things like that. And I'm, I, you know, I grew up in the middle of all of that. I was indoctrinated into the whole, you know, this, all of that stuff because I, I grew up in the night, you know, I grew up in the, the 90s and became an adult in the two, in the early 2000s and that was back when they were still really pushing all that stuff, all, all this stuff really hard. And I personally think that it's made life a lot harder for a lot more people because, you know, everybody's, we're all, we're all so foc self, uh, focused on ourselves and when you're focused on yourself, you can't, you can't build anything with anybody else, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody. Uh, okay. We need to get a little bit of... We need to get around the star a little bit so I can actually target that ammonia planet. So was I able to do that now? It was near the star. There it is. Alright, I think what we're going to do, since we're at the 20 minute mark, I think we're going to go ahead and scan this system. See what we can find here. See if there's any biology. But either way, I think we're going to go ahead and land here. Because we're going to have to take a second to go and scan that ammonia world. And then it takes a couple of minutes to get down to a planet once we, get, once we decide which one we're going to go to. So... Definitely need to take a moment to scan this system to see if we can find since we had to land anyways I like to I'd like to land somewhere that has biology on it if we can find that Even one biology is better than none if we're gonna have to land anyway, so that's kind of my philosophy when I'm do <clears throat> That's kind of my philosophy when uh, I'm flying around like this. Once we, once I get to the point where I know I'm gonna land, anyways, because I like to land on a planet to end my, to end my sessions. There's, uh, well, hold on, my, there we go. Um, there's no, there's no in-game reason to not to to need to land. It's more of a just a personal preference thing. I like, I like to land to end my sessions. It's kind of a role-playing thing where, you know, you land, you shut down your ship for the night, take a stand, go to sleep, <laughs> something like that. Looks like there's one more gas giant over here that's going to have some moons around it. Gives us one more shot at possibly getting our biology. But this game goes with the panspermia approach to biology. So if you don't find one in the first one or two, then you're probably not going to find it. Uh, one or two around a moon or something like that. Because usually, if you find one biology around, or one biology somewhere, sorry, I'm just trying to focus on this. Like, this entire thing should be filled with biology if it had it. That's usually the way it works. It's not a 100% it's not a rule, but it's usually the way it works. Okay, so let's go get this water world scanned, and then once we're done scanning it, we'll go grab the, the, uh, the closest... Uh, We'll go grab the closest landable planet. And then we'll get down on the ground and be done. So, message of the day. Find somebody you can spend your life with so that once you get to the point where chasing your urges isn't as fun as it used to be, you have somebody to share your time with. <laughs> <clears throat> you have somebody to go on trips with. You have somebody to share. Because one of the big things that uh, I've always known about myself is that I'm super selfish and I like to be by myself because dealing with people is hard for me. Um, I don't have patience for other for other people's needs and wants and desires. And it annoys me to have to stop what I'm doing to take care of somebody else's stuff. But all of that taken into consideration... Even though I want to do things like to go and travel and maybe you know, I my, one of my biggest dreams is to sail around the world, right? But if I even if I even if I get to do that, oh come on, really? Hopefully that's gonna get it. Oh, I guess I could have done it on this side. 
I'm so I'm so used to throwing the back the the one around the back on up, up at the top that it didn't even occur to me to do it over here. But that's fine. Let's just make sure we got this. Okay. So. That's really the closest one. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, one of my biggest dreams is to sail around the world. I love sailing and I love and I've watched a bunch of YouTube channels of people who are doing circumnavigations and stuff. And as much as I'd love to do that, um, I've always known that if later in my life who am I going to share that with if I didn't do it with somebody you know so a lot of times we're so focused on what we want to do and we don't think about the the proper and right way to do it and for me at least I want to be able to look back when I'm in my you know 60s and 70s and be able to look at my wife and say hey remember this thing we did back 20 years ago <laughs> so um, you know, if I have to go by myself for whatever reason, so be it. But I really want to have somebody to take with me, and I really want to have somebody to share those experiences with. Because one of the things about the, the only thing, one of the things about life experiences that uh, most modern our modern day sensibilities don't take into consideration is that the quality of those experiences is more than the sum of its parts when you combine it with somebody else. So it isn't, you know, you have your own experience and then the other person has their experience, but when you mix those, when you mix your two experiences together, you get much more out of that combined than you would either one of you by yourself. Or even just trying, even just taking the sum of each of your own individual experiences. Because there's, we're, we're social creatures, the way, we're social animals, that's just the way that we are. and. So we're, 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 we're set up in a way, we're set up in a way where the things that we do together give, give us so much more than anything we do by ourselves. Now there's rare exceptions to that where there's just some people who are just really loners, but most of us are not. Most of us are not like that. Okay, so I'm gonna slow down here to make sure I don't end up doing something stupid like slamming into the thing like I did last time. Because for whatever reason, we I, I came in, I was approaching a planet, and then as soon as I hit orbital cruise or orbital, whatever you want to call it, uh, it dropped me. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? So I'm just trying to make sure that we're not slamming in here too fast. I'm going to find the Terminator over here. We'll land. So you gotta be very careful with your speed. I think we'll try to land right there. I mean, we just need to get down. The shallower the angle, the longer it's gonna take us to get there, so. Alright, that works. Just need to get down to the ground. So, anyways, <clears throat> hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button if you did, so that the YouTube algorithm. I. Oops. Hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click the like button if you did, so that the YouTube algorithm will know and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not subscribed, help us reach that 10,000 subscriber mark by pressing the button now. Channel members get early access to all of our content, so be sure to click that join button. Check out the list of options available there and decide if any of those are right for you. This is that. That was the uh, the the lack of paying attention that always gets me. I got to be much more careful. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not interested in a membership but would like to support the channel, you can always leave YouTube's version of a tip with that thanks button. Hope you enjoyed the flight. Be sure to come back for the next one, and I'll see you then.